Good morning, brethren, and you're welcome to God's sanctuary. We'll sing together now to start this Sunday school. We'll sing hymn number two. Hymn number two. We'll sing all the stanzas sitting down. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. We will sing God's stanza sitting down after the introduction by the audience. sing for that hymn number six we'll stand to sing the two stanzas of this song hymn number six we'll rise to sing the two stanzas we'll remain standing to be led in congregational prayers sing eternal praises unto the father sing eternal praises ever to the son sing eternal praises to the holy ghost sing eternal praises to the three in one we we'll sing after the introduction by the pianist.
Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify your holy name. Accept our thanks. Accept our praises. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have come before you this morning. He said, he who offered praises, said, glorify thee. And he who ordered his conversation aright, said, you will show them your salvation. Lord, this morning, we want to learn at your feet. Show us your salvation. Show us your salvation. Show us your salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commit the teacher into your holy hands. Lord, speak through him. Speak through the teacher. Let the teacher communicate with us. Give him unction, Lord. Let him speak from the throne of mercy, from the throne of heaven this morning. Lord, make our heart receptive to hear you, to understand you, to receive the word. Lord, at the end, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Once again, good morning to you all and welcome to the Sunday school. May God bless each and every one of us. I want us to please listen carefully to this uh, announcement. Uh, the lesson or the series of lessons we are having now we alter our class distribution. Therefore, this morning, we are going to have a central class for all the English classes. That is, English intermediate and also adults we have their class together from the pulpit. Why Yoruba Agba? Yoruba Agba, class Ikini, Ikeji Keta Tikeri, Atia Wabiamo, Oni Idani Leko, Inu Yara Dura, Igbo, Akwa Tumini, Nye Ilon, Nuo Joko, Lati gba idani leko won ni gba nbe ni won ti se ogbo fo fun won ethic all the ethic we go to my left down there at the back there is a sign there to indicate that's their class same thing for you by my right that's where you are going to have your class it will be interpreted directly to you from the main teacher here and after, we'll all be here. Please, let's take note of this. Teachers in the intermediate classes, please, I want you to stand up and go to the gallery where the intermediate uh, classes will be listening to the lesson from the pulpit. Teachers, all the assigned teachers for intermediate English classes, boys and girls, should please go to the gallery. Thank you. Also, teachers for AFSS students should go to the gallery. At the side of your organ now, all the intermediate boys and girls, including uh, AFSS, they will move to the gallery. Boys to my right and girls to the left. Teachers in that class should please move to the gallery. like that you maintain silence and listen to the teachers while the lesson is going on. No side talk and uh, no noise at all. God bless you as you do that. Daniel Yoruba French students should move to the studio where you will listen to your lesson. French to the studio. Yes, AFSS. Move gently to your Class at the gallery.
Effie should please rise and move to my left extreme end. Effie, Ego should please stand and go to my right extreme end of that column. English students should please come together. Thank you. Please, we are allowing our other students to settle down before we begin. Kindly bear with us. Good morning, everyone. We heartily welcome you to Sunday School this morning. And the same greetings we extend to our internet audience as they join us in the Sunday School this day. What is the topic of the lesson we are reviewing today? Yes. The Divine Trinity. Shall we all say that together? Those of you on the gallery, right and left and center, please can you say the topic of our lesson together? Once again. Thank you very much. The memory vows for the adults. Memory verse for the adults. Who is reciting for us? Please let us be smart. Yes, at the back. Please give the, give the microphone to... Nobody is reciting. In the middle. In the middle. Uh, 
when he bringeth in his first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Please, I crave your indulgence. Shall we all rise and recite the memory verse? I know you know the memory verse. Let us recite the memory verse together. One, go. Thank you. Please be seated. The intermediate memory vows, girls, girls, you may not have access to the microphone. Nevertheless, let somebody whose voice is so loud, or all of you together, can you recite the memory vows? One, go. Thank you very much. The boys on the right gallery, the boys on the right gallery, as you are descending, please be reciting the memory verse. Thank you very much. We are very sorry for the inconvenience that we have caused. We observed that the hall is commodious enough to take all of us, and there wouldn't have been any need to go to the galleries at all. That is why we felt we should sit down together in this main auditorium to have our lesson. So as they are coming back, let us give them a few minutes to settle down. Please be brisk, kindly be, be fast. Those are the central column upstairs. I believe that is the Yoruba class. Am I right? Those students on the central gallery column, please, if you are not a Yoruba speaking person, kindly descend to the main auditorium quickly. The lesson we have is the first in the series of lessons which we will be studying in the book of the Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews. We are starting with the doctrinal lesson titled The Divine Trinity. So the text 
is Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. I want one student to open the Bible to Hebrews chapter 1, read verses 1 to 6. A female student. A female student. Whether in the FSS or in any of the secondary schools. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 6. And it is God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Thank you very much. There is a mystery behind the lesson we are studying today, the divine trinity. And God is expecting that all those whose faith has been distorted will have a reconnection back to God. This belief in the divine trinity has caused spiritual shipwreck for some people. It has caused unanswered prayers for some people. It has caused spiritual retrogression for some people because they have tried to divorce one of the principal personalities in the Godhead from the other. This morning, we want to quickly look at a specimen to open this lesson, to give us a clear understanding of this lesson, to show us the cohesion that exists in the body of the Godhead. So we will request the WCS to please project the first picture so that we can have a look at it. With much respect to all of you, what do we have on the screen? All of us are not talking. Yes, I want this class to be vibrant. I want this class to be reviving. What do we have on the screen? I want somebody from the intermediate class to tell me the composition of this egg we are seeing on the screen. No, not you girls, boys. Give him the mic, give him the mic. Tell us the components, the parts contained in this egg. Nobody's talking there. Okay, girls. Give the mic to somebody. The yolk, the egg whites. Yeah. Okay, who is talking? And shell. From the boys. The yolk, the egg white, and shell. Now, what you see in front of us, we all are acquainted with egg. We have the shell, which is the coverage, brown in color. Next to it, we have the albumin, which is white in color, and we have the yolk, which is yellow in color. So these three elements form the egg. And we can say that without breaking 
that egg is intact. But when it breaks, as you are seeing up there, the shell is removed, you can see the yolk, you can see the albumin. That is a semi-liquefied form. In other words, it is not completely solidified. But if you take this egg in its original state and you give it back to the mother hen, after a period of time, that egg is hatched. And what comes out of it? Eh? Yes. There is life in that egg. But if you distort it by cooking, you distort it by throwing it on the ground, you will discover that the purpose of that egg is already jeopardized. It's already destroyed. One, you will lose the life of the chicken. If you cook it, although you may eat it, but you have destroyed the life of that chicken. So it behoves you, at initio, to allow that egg to remain with the mother hen if you want life from it. Thank you, WCS. So this is what we are studying this morning. That egg is a mystery. You have a shell, you have the albumin, you have the yolk, and all this will eventually come out with a chick or chicken. And in the process of time, you begin to eat chicken. That is if it is not distorted. And so this morning, we are looking at the divine trinity. We are studying our lesson under four topics. The first topic is we want to see what trinity means. The definition of trinity. We also want to consider and establish personalities in the divine trinity. We also want to see positive proof of the mystery of the Trinity. And finally, we want to see some evidences of the Trinity in our present day lives. In other words, the life application of this lesson, how it affects individuals. If we are to consider the mysteries of God himself, nobody can unravel it. Nobody can fathom it. Nobody can know. Some people ask, especially the younger ones, they say, who is the father of God? Or who created God? Some will ask. They are saying Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the son of God. Well, we knew when he was born in Bethlehem, but then his birth also was a mystery. Then they said, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, where is he? Where does he inhabit? So all of these questions are questions beyond this realm. It is only the Bible that has given us a clue, and it behoves us, therefore, to have implicit faith in God. For you to be able to understand the mysteries of God, you must be spiritual. You must be a beneficiary of the plan of redemption which God put in place even before the world was created. Should there be anyone who disbelieves God the Son, who disbelieves the Holy Spirit, such a person has not believed at all. Because the Trinity itself is the embodiment of our Christian faith. Our Christian faith is completely hinged, is standing on our faith and belief in the Trinity. Any extortion or distortion that is done to the Holy Trinity will deny us of the benefits of the divine trinity. Divine trinity is also called what? 
It's also called what? Please, don't hesitate to raise up your hand. When we say divine trinity, what other name do we, do we know it by? Yes? Let me see hands up. I will be excusing our teachers here. I want, I want participation. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, Trinity is a Latin word which is mean. What uh, what okay, is what is, other name do we call the Trinity? Okay, we, we can call it uh, three in one, and we can also call it threefold. Okay, yes, that answer is correct. But I want a technical name. Technical name. Godhead. Godhead. Godhead comprising Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We also refer to the Godhead as the triune God. And that brings us to the meaning of Trinity. As he has said, that is the union of three people, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that word Trinity is a derivative of a Latin word. It's a derivative. It is derived from Latin word. And that Latin word is trinita. Tree. Tree. We call it trio. Anything you have which is tree, T R I, simplifies three. Three different personalities in one. It is a mystery. Now let us open our Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. If you see it, please read. Verse 1. one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, too. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Thank you very much. Let us stop there. One and two. In the beginning, God, the supreme being, the first person of the Trinity, created the heaven and the earth. And while this was going on, there was somebody present there. There was somebody present there. Who was that person? All of us? Eh? I can't hear you. Thank you. God the Son, Jesus Christ. And the third character was upon the face of the sea. He also was a partaker of this creation. When heaven and earth were being made, the three of them collaborated. The three of them were at work. So we will see consequently that three people were working together. The trinity we are talking about has so many derivatives. So many derivatives that if we begin to analyze them, one, when the ark was being built in the wilderness, God told them to make it three partitions. And the Bible tells us that the, 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 the prophet at that time, Moses, did everything according to specification, not adding, not doing anything else. He did it perfectly as God directed him, and the tabernacle worship was established. In the junior lesson, we are told that so many sacrifices were offered at that time, during the time of Moses. The Mosaic law was given to them, and sacrifices were established for them in their varying degrees, and the prophets were coming from time to time to offer their sacrifices for them. Among the priests or prophets we had at that time, we had Moses, we had Samuel, 
We have Ezekiel, we have Jeremiah, we had Isaiah, and many of them like that. And in these realms, in their different realms, they were bringing out types, forms, symbols of what was going to happen in time to come. Because God in his foreknowledge knew that man was going to fall. And so he prepared the plan of redemption, the plan of salvation, the plan of happiness for mankind. In the process of time, Jesus had to come. But before he came, there was this council in heaven. And John the Beloved was given a glimpse into what was happening there. There was the seal that bound the books together. The seven books were bound together by a seal which nobody could open. Revelation chapter 5. And he started to weep. John was weeping. Who will go for us? Who will go and deliver the world? The world of sin. Mankind. Who was going to procure salvation for them? There was silence in heaven. And eventually, somebody stepped out. God the Son stepped out. And the elder told John, weep not. By the grace of God this morning, all those who have been weeping for one problem or the other, one situation or the other, God is going to wipe away their tears this morning. And when he saw the lion of the tribe of Judah, he was persuaded, he was calmed. And Jesus now offered himself a sacrifice for the whole world. So all those sacrifices were now fulfilled in the body of Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem as a babe, who grew up in Judea and did so many miracles. And eventually, the rejectors of God, his own rejectors, they nailed him to the cross. He shed his blood and he was buried. But gloriously, on the third day, he rose from the grave. And he had victory over death, had victory over the grave, had victory over hell, thereby delivering us from the danger of hell, delivering us from the danger of the grave, delivering us from the danger of perpetual death, eternal, eternal death. So through the salvation he procured for us today, we are here. That is the work of the Trinity. No wonder in our church today, anybody who comes in will tell the person, our church is a conservative church, we are conservative in nature, and we are also Trinitarian. We believe wholeheartedly the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. A conservative person is one who will not compromise. One who will not shift his stand. He will always stand for the truth. Even if it means dying for the truth. And this is why this church has been kept up to this moment. Any Christian who wants to be kept, the Trinity has the power to keep that person. In 1906, the church began and in, in Portland, Oregon, and it spread worldwide. And in our own time, in 1944, it came to us. So we are 80 years this year. What has kept us strong is our belief in the Trinity. What has kept us strong is our belief in the tenets of the Bible. We don't add, we don't subtract. And my prayer is that as we go into this lesson today, may God please help us not to shift ground. Yeah. 
We don't want to shift. We don't want to, 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 we don't want to change it with anything. The gospel is not good for us. And by the grace of God, we are going to remain here. We know that the people in, 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 uh, in the people Paul the apostle was writing to, they believed in the law of Moses, the Mosaic law, and they still believed in the sacrifices they were offering. But Paul the apostle was now trying to let them know that all the sacrifices they believed in had been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity. Because if you look at the plan of redemption itself, God being the, su the su supreme being, and Jesus, his own begotten son, being part of that plan, and the Holy Ghost also being an agent of that plan, had been consummated. God had already finished that plan. And now the executor, Jesus Christ, physically came into the, into the scene. And when he eventually died, he went back again to God. And today, where is he sitting? Where is Jesus sitting? Today, where is he sitting? Yes. Just one hand. Yes, you have answered once. Yes. Give, give her the mic. At the right hand side of God. Doing what? Pray, praying for us. Thank you very much. Right now, Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, is sitting at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, interceding for you and for me. The accuser of the brethren, Satan, has something to accuse you of on a daily basis. But the plea of Jesus, the passionate mercy of Jesus, is what is keeping us today. The devil would have derailed us. The devil would have made nonsense of us. But for the sake of the blood of Jesus, which is shed on Calvary, we are spared. We will not leave this blood. We will continue to plead that blood because that is our strength. The three of them are co-equal. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are co-equal. They do not work independently. They do not do their things in abeyance. They do their things together. And in this lesson, we are made to understand that there are other ministering angels, ministering angels that are messengers. God knew that the agency of man was going to be misused. God gave us free moral agency, that is to choose whatsoever thing we want, to choose wherever we want to go, to choose whatsoever thing we want to do. And God knew in his foreknowledge that man was going to misuse that. When eventually the devil succeeded in deceiving Eve and consequently Adam, and the fell or called, two things happened. One, they died spiritually. Two, they were prone to dying physically. When somebody dies spiritually, he is separated from God. And when somebody dies physically, he is separated, the body is separated from the spirit. Man has a spirit. The soul of man does not die. It lives forever. And that is why God is very careful in sending this message to Paul the Apostle, first to the Hebrew Christians and now to us today members of the Apostolic Faith Church. God is now beckoning to us, those of us who have not completely believed in the Trinity, as some religions are doing. Some say they believe there is only one God, and that is all. Some say, no, it is only Jesus, and that is all. 
Some have even gone to the extent of baptizing in the name of Jesus only. They don't have anything to do with God the Father. They don't have anything to do with God the Holy Spirit. But if there is a distortion of any kind by anybody, he will not receive the blessings of God. If you do it right, you will get the answer right. If you do it wrongly, you get the answer wrongly. Because God is no respecter of persons. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. And let us read Revelation chapter 5. Let somebody read Revelation chapter 5. We mentioned it earlier on, but that is the biblical evidence that we have. Read verse 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Okay, verse Six. Six. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Nine. Nine. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Thank you. Jesus is the Lamb of God that was slain from the very foundation of the earth. Even before the earth was created at all, Jesus had offered his sacrifice, a complete sacrifice for mankind. So when he came out physically to receive the books and to cut the seal, the 24 elders and all the angels, they began to sing songs of praise because man was not going to be doomed forever. You can imagine a situation whereby somebody has no hope of eternal life. It's a very bad thing. And that is why this morning we believe that all those who are still walking at the periphery of sinfulness, God will humble their hearts and God will save their souls. Paul was once one of those who did not believe in Jesus Christ. He believed in the sacrifices offered, but he didn't believe in Jesus Christ. And he went around persecuting the church of God. But on his way to Damascus, God cornered him up. And when he stood before King Agrippa, he was able to tell him, I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision. When God told him, Jesus told him, why, that, why persecutest thou me? So, so. And he said, what would you have me to do? And God unraveled all that he wanted him to do. And glory be to God, from that moment until he was martyred, he did not go back from Jesus Christ. We have started the race. By the grace of God, we shall finish the race. And that is why we are reading about him today. There are three distinct personalities in the Godhead, as we have said. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So that is the second point. Who is a personality? When we say personality, what do we mean? Well, what do we mean when we say personality? Yes, quick, quick. When we say personality, yes. Well. The physical appearance of a person. Yes, the physical appearance of somebody. Physical appearance of a person. Yes. Does anybody have anything to add? Yes. The distinct qualities of an individual. The distinct qualities of an individual. Uh, the, the state? Qualities. Okay. Qualities of a man. The personality of a person. 
brings out the influence of a man, the character of a man, his disposition, his temperament, his mental ability, and also his emotional ability. The way that person acts, the way he speaks, the way he does his things, will tell you what kind of a person this is. Personalities, we have them all over the place. We have them in the church, we have them outside the church. But we are saying the personalities of the Godhead are supreme. As Jesus is above all, God is above all, the Holy Ghost is above all, and we do not have sufficient words to describe these personalities. But by faith, according to what the Bible tells us, that the Bible interprets itself, and God is his own interpreter, he will make it known to us, and we, he will give us the understanding. Some people believe that angels should be worshipped. But may I ask, who are angels? Who are angels? Yes, who are angels? Among our students, who are angels? Yes, give it to that person. Angels are ministering um, servants, and they are servants of God. Thank you very much. They are ministering spirits, and they are servants of God. God sends them on, arena, on an errand. Jesus sends them on an errand. And as God and Jesus have physical bones, physical body, physical flesh, the spirit, the angels, do not have this. They are ministering spirits. And so also, the Holy Spirit, he is a spirit. He will not exemplify himself in physical and fleshly activities. He moves in the spirit. He is a spirit. And also Jesus Christ, having put on the glorified body, also moves in the spirit. And God, the supreme being, also moves in the spirit. So we can see the mystery of the Godhead. None of us now, even though we have our own spirit within us, we cannot disappear from here until we put on the glorified body. But one day, by the grace of God, if Jesus comes, he's going to change this, our mortal body. We shall put on glorified body. And then we can travel to America without aircraft. So this is what the angels are doing for God. They will appear. And they will do their work. Sometimes they can appear in the form of a man. They can appear in the form of anything. Even though physically they do not have this tangible body. But they can transform themselves through the power of God. Can we name some occasions when angels were sent to some people? Can we remember when angels were sent to some people? Yes, yes, yes. Abraham. Yes, tell us one. Give him the mic. Uh, uh, God sent an angel to uh, Abraham when he want, to, want him to go to a land where he has not even known. Thank you very much. He sent an angel to Abraham. God sent an angel to Mary to tell him about the coming of Jesus Christ. Thank you. One more, more, more. Yes. Take the microphone. He also sent an angel to Lot that he should leave the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Thank you. He sent an angel to Lot that God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, that hand up there. God sent in Michael to Daniel when he prayed for about 21 days, no answer. And later God made him to know that he has answered the prayer. When the uh, kings of Persia 
Thank you, very, thank you very much. Yes, that hand there. Yes. Okay. First, you. God sent angels to Samson period that the child Samson would be in Nazarene. I can't hear you. God sent angel to Samson period that the child would be in Nazarene. Samson himself would be in Nazarene. That no razor should be placed on his head. Okay. Samson, yes. Finally, the other one hand. That hand over there. God sent an angel to Zechariah to tell him that his son's name will be called John. Thank you very much, Zechariah, who was ministering in the temple. All of these people, they received heavenly guests. We are expecting these heavenly guests here this morning. Are you expecting? Yes. Pregnant women, are you expecting? Yes. Bachelors and spinsters, are you expecting? Yes. The unemployed, are you expecting? Yes. God will send to you. So, Jesus Christ and God had always been personalities that have carried out this plan of redemption to the letter. But the agency of the Holy Ghost now, we want to, we want to identify the role of the Holy Ghost in this plan of redemption. What does the Holy Ghost do? What does the Holy Ghost do? Yes, Brother Anthony. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Thank so you. he has part in the recreation of man. Thank you very much. When God said in Genesis 1:26, let us make man in our own image. God was affirming the tr Trinity there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the pronoun, let us, indicates that God was not speaking to himself alone. He was not speaking to two people alone. He was speaking to the, to the tri trio. And Nicodemus was told, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you must be born again. Salvation itself is a mystery. Somebody was stealing. Somebody who was a fornicator, somebody was, who, who was one that would remove somebody's roof to go and use, to build his own building, changing overnight and becoming somebody that will be heaven bound. It is a mystery. And then the person will say, the things I used to do, I do them no more. Oh, glory be to God. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our day today helps us in our day now one Jesus said it's expedient for me to go so that I will tell the father to send to you the comforter who will lead you into all the truth the comforter who will remind you all those things that I have taught you and today he helps us to pray he helps us to agonize in prayers he helps us to do things, unimaginable things we cannot ordinarily do. He gives us the boldness. He gives us the power. He gives us the enabling to be able to work. No wonder. Jesus told the disciples before he left that they should gather in, the, in Jerusalem until they be endued with the Holy Ghost. So today we have the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Who, he gives us power. Power for service. And when Jesus told us in his word, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Let somebody read. Quickly read Matthew 28, verse 18. Yes, who is reading? 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Thank you. All power is given unto me in heaven and in, and in earth. All power is given. And this power has been given to the church. Behold, I give unto you power. May that power be yours today. And this power to tread upon serpents and scorpions 
and all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is what the church has today because we believe in the Holy Trinity, the triune God, the Godhead. Now let us look at John chapter 1 verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3. John 1 3. Yes, Three. somebody told it. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Thank you. First Corinthians 8, verse 6. First Corinthians 8, verse 6. Six. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Thank you very much. And we are able to see clearly in the baptism of Jesus Christ, the three personalities working together. Shall we quickly turn to Matthew chapter 3? Matthew chapter 3, let us read verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Thank you. Is there any doubt in any person as to the presence of the Trinity in this account? Is there any doubt? No doubt. Let us be bold. If we are sure, let us answer. Is there any doubt in any man as to the presence of the three personalities in this event? No. Jesus was physically in the water, being baptized by John the Baptist. And then as he was coming out of the water, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, came upon him, rested upon him, assertively, and then a voice from heaven, the voice of God the Almighty, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So the Trinity is real. There is no gain saying the fact. So we are disproving those haters of Jesus who say that Jesus is not the Son of God. We believe in his deity. We believe in his divinity. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, at a time, Jesus was asking his disciples, whom do you think people say am I? Whom do you think people say am I? And they were saying, well, some say you are Elijah, some say you are Isaiah, some say you are a prophet. He said, you who have been following me, whom do you think I am? And Peter said, thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus said, upon this confession, upon this statement, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is why this church is standing today. And no hell, no gates of hell shall prevail against it. And you as an individual, just take your stand. Have this right frame of mind. Believe in the Holy Trinity. Believe in the Word of God. We are just starting this lesson now, a doctrinal lesson. We are still going to follow in sequence. Let us believe in total the word of God. There lies our power. There lies our strength. There lies our eternity with Jesus. And by the grace of God, we shall not miss it. Uh, the plurality of names, we have said that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God will not use I. He will not use me. He would always say, come, let us. Come, let us go down. Come, let us make man. So he was always calling a council, calling these personalities together. And uh, these personalities, we thank God, they are from everlasting to everlasting. God does not change. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. You can change, I can change. But by the grace of God, we will not change. We have tested the goodness of God. We are not going to retreat. 
we will keep forging ahead. And so this plurality of names is ascertained in our lesson this week to show to uh, the, the critics, the cynics, the skeptics that Trinity is real. Triune God, the Godhead, the three persons in one. And now he's bringing us to the knowledge, even this same Paul the Apostle. He said the unity that exists among these three is indescribable. You cannot describe the unity. The unity is so perfect. And that is the unity we need in the church. That is the unity we need in the, in the homes. If this unity is orchestrated in our congregation, orchestrated in our homes, we will be living a life of paradise here on earth. Ephesians 5.31. Ephesians 5.31. Ephesians 5.31. Yes, quickly, read, give, it to, give the mic to somebody. 31. For, for this God shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be on all flesh. And they too shall be all of us. They too. This is the mathematics nobody, no professor of mathematics has been able to unravel how and why one plus one should be one. There's no formula. Even the almighty, the so-called almighty formula has not been able to detect why this is so. Because it is a mystery of God. It takes faith to understand it. It takes spirituality to understand it. Why a man should leave father and mother, cleave to his own wife, and the two of them shall be one flesh. This morning, all broken homes. All broken homes. God will restore them. God does not want anyone to be separated. The body of Christ is not separated. The Trinity is not separated. They work together. They work in concert. And whatsoever thing the Father does, the Son and the Holy Spirit are joined together. You remember when Jesus went to Martha and Mary, they were lamenting. If you had been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus told them, why are you worrying yourself? Have I, have I not told you that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? God wanted them to leave the realm of miracles, of healing, miracles, of provision, to the miracle of resurrection. And he said, take me to that place. And when Jesus got there, John chapter 11, verses 40 to 44. Time will not permit us to read. Martha told him, Jesus, by now, he would be stinking. Because four days ago, he died and was buried. Jesus said, oh, roll away the stone. And when Jesus looked up with his hands raised, he prayed to the Father. He didn't say, Jesus, me. He said, oh, my Father, I know you have heard me. And I knew it, that you will always hear me. And for the sake of these people standing by, please, answer me once again. Amen. Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And Lazarus came forth. The dead man was seen at the front of the tomb with napkin. Jesus said, remove the napkin from his face. Lose him and let him go. Amen. Sinners will leave this place saved. Amen. Those with problems, those who have one thing or the other dead in their life, this morning, they are going to ex experience resurrection. Amen. They will experience resuscitation Amen. by the special grace of God. And the apostles, they did all they could to obey Jesus because they had known Jesus beyond measure. They knew Jesus was in tune with his father and in tune with the Holy Spirit. Hence, when they got to the upper room in Jerusalem, they did not disunite. In one accord, they stayed in the room for 10 good days, praying and expecting the arrival of the Holy Spirit. 
And on the tenth day, because of their unity, because they were in one accord, the Holy Spirit descended upon them. Are you praying for the Holy Spirit? You will receive your own this morning. And when the power came, because the power is accompanying the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives the power. It is not the power that gives the Holy Spirit. He says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Let us be consequential. Let us follow things in sequence. Feel, receive the Holy Ghost and the power will follow. And when they receive the power, Peter, that was scared, that was terrorized by that young girl, became so bold to stand before King Agrippa to preach to him. Look, King Agrippa, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of you because I'm not disobedient to the heavenly vision I received. And even when he was dying, when it was evident that he was going to be killed, he said, no, I just need one thing from you. I don't want to die like my Lord and Savior. Instead of you putting my head up, please put my head down on the cross. And so he was nailed to the cross. He died as a martyr and he finished his course. Now he has done his bit and we know this lesson that brought to us this morning has opened our eyes to know that implicit belief in the word of God brings blessings. But if there is any distortion, like we saw in the egg, you will see that there is nothing we can do. Before we bring this lesson to a close, I will, bring, I will request the WCS to give us the other picture to let us know that these three characters are united. They are distinct individuals. They are separate individuals, but fused together, joined together, united together. So this is telling us that God is at the middle. You can see God at the center. I hope you can see it clearly. God is at the center there. But the Father is on the left hand of my, my left hand side. The Son is at the right hand side. And the Holy Spirit is at the lower side and God in the middle. This picture is telling us that God is not Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? God, the Father, is not the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not Jesus Christ. They are three distinct individuals, clearly marked. But then, God in the center. He is God the Father. He is God the Son. And He is the God the Holy Spirit. So when you talk of God, you will know that we have three persons in one Godhead, in triune God, in God divine. So God at the center is replicated as the Son, as the Holy Ghost, and as the Father. And that is why in this church we pray in the triune God. Sister Dukwe, can you tell us how we pray? Using the three names. Yes. We pray through God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we all say Amen. amen. So any prayer you offer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, believing, you receive the answer. Amen. All the answers to our prayers this morning by the special grace of God, God will answer. Amen. He will give us the answer. Amen. And we shall leave this place rejoicing. Amen. And the Apostle Creed, this lesson reminds us the joint effort of the Trinity in what we call the Apostles' Creed. I, let me read. Let me read. Please listen attentively. It's a catechism, sort of. It confirms the Trinity. It confirms the Godhead. It confirms the three personalities in the Godhead. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So when we have this creed, we know the time is very short. The millennium is here. Jesus is coming again. And by the special grace of God, all of us, all those who believe in the Trinity, we shall be caught up into the Azure above. So that when the rapture takes place, by the special grace of God, no one will be left behind. This is our lesson. we have a short review let us sing our song 664 let us sing hymn number 664 we are singing stanzas 1 and 2 only our hearts are full of joy today we have found the golden way give us the tune we shall rise up, let us rise up to sing. inform you that by the grace of God, the books we are studying, the chapters of the book of Hebrews we are studying, will take us throughout this quarter. So it behoves us, therefore, to get our book written by Charles Rodman on the book of Hebrews, volumes one and two. Please see your group leader for the soft copy. Those of you in the groups, please see your group leader and obtain 
the soft copy for your use. This is very important. And also, let us make effort. Let us make effort to read the book of Hebrews for my edification. And God is going to bless us. Now, we are going to rise for the a closing prayer of our Sunday school. Thereafter, let us go down on our knees and tell God specifically what we want him to do for us. And I know at the end of this service today, we shall go home rejoicing. God bless you. Shall we rise up for the closing prayer? Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we thank you for this wonderful lesson you have taught us this morning. Accept our thanks. We believe in the Godhead. We believe in the Godhead, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, don't let us deny you. Establish this word in our heart. You have expounded to us. You have confirmed to us through the Bible passages that you are the living God. Lord, this lesson, establish it in our heart. Is the foundation of our faith, of our belief. Lord, this lesson, let it help us to get to heaven at last. As we are going on our knees, come and meet us. Let your spirit minister to our soul. At the end, we want to reign with you. Answer our prayer, for we ask in Jesus' name. Let's go down on our knees to pray on what we have heard. And shortly, the morning, the fortunate service will start. God bless you all.